course, we're watching the uh, body here, the casket of <clears throat> our fallen soldier, Sergeant Anthony Maddox, returning home to Southeast Texas where he lived in Port Arthur before his service in the Army. And we want to, as they are bringing that casket down, to maybe share some of your comments um, that we've had from you on Facebook. Liz telling us, thank you for your service and sacrifice. Welcome home, soldier. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Uh, Donna Terrio posted, prayers go out to this family, a true hero. Michelle Morgan adding, welcome home, soldier. May your family find comfort at this difficult time. If you would like to share some of your comments, again, we're asking you to do so on Facebook. And the family, again, telling us what a wonderful thing it has been for them with all of the many people offering their condolences, their thanks for their son's service in our military. Very moving ceremony already at uh, the Jack Brooks Regional Airport. You've seen uh, fellow military members as well as uh, dozens of people from the community and the Maddox family, uh, his mother and stepfather uh, out there as the uh, casket carrying Sergeant Maddox's body will uh, set to be taken off this plane in just a matter of moments. And he becomes uh, the 17th fallen soldier from Southeast Texas in the past 10 years with this sacrifice. And of course, he was not killed in combat, but nevertheless, they're serving and uh, was burned in an accident there. Only 22 years old, a 2009 graduate of Nederland High School. Again, just moved to Southeast Texas. Uh, his last couple of years of high school made tons of friends, uh, as we've seen over the past couple of weeks uh, since uh, coming to Nederland. And um, a lot of his friends, a lot of his former football teammates, classmates, uh, just uh, devastated by this loss. and. Um, had planned to make uh, his career, uh, his, his stay in the Army a career. as we wait for the casket to be taken off the plane. Once again, we want to remind you about the procession route for uh, Sergeant Maddox. If you'd like to go out and show your support, uh, you're asked to uh, maybe wave an American flag or if you can just come out and, and pay your respects and show your support for the family, they'll leave the Jack Brooks Regional Airport, go along the feeder road of Highway 69, north there to Spurlock Road, which is just a couple of blocks away. Take a right on Spurlock. This is all in Nederland. Take a right on Spurlock Road, then turn right on North 18th Street. That takes you right in front of Nederland High School. And that route will then also make its way in front of Bulldog Stadium onto 21st Street. Then they'll take a left on Nederland Avenue and a right onto Twin City Highway. They'll then proceed uh, into Port Arthur. The procession will take a right on Gulfway Drive and a left on Woodworth, and then a uh, right-hand turn on Proctor Street, where it will end up at Gabriel Funeral Home in Port Arthur, which is where the funeral service will be held on Saturday. Once again, uh, Sergeant Maddox's family there out at the regional airport awaiting the deliverance of their son. I can't even imagine how difficult this must be. I'm sure, so, so proud of him for his service to our country, but just the heartache of having him come home. Again, he was supposed to return home on August 15th, mm -hmm. and the mother had told us how she had talked with him and said, can't wait to see you, and so excited to have him return. Once again, family members uh, standing at attention, other military members standing at attention, uh, waiting for the casket to be removed from that uh, military airplane. And uh, you can see some of the soldiers now making their way over to the airplane to remove the casket. And uh, should be, uh, we're told, a small little ceremony here in just a couple of moments um, as, uh, as they remove the casket from the airplane. Let's take a watch.
out. Once again, live coverage from the Jack Brooks Regional Airport in Jefferson County as the body of Sergeant Anthony Maddox is returned home to Southeast Texas for a final time. You saw uh, family members of Anthony Maddox getting into the family car there wearing those Maddox 26 t-shirts. That was his high school football number when he played for Nederland High School just a few short years ago. His mother, uh, Glenda Key, obviously, uh, and understandably overwhelmed as she was helped into the family car just a couple of moments ago. His stepfather, Ronald, out there as well as other family members. Uh, what's going to happen now is this uh, procession will be led by the Patriot Guard riders through the city of Nederland and into Port Arthur throughout uh, the next couple of hours or so as uh, they take Sergeant Maddox's body to Gabriel Funeral Home. What they'll do is they'll leave the airport now, uh, go northbound on the Highway 69 feeder road, just a couple of blocks up to Spurlock Road uh, in Nederland, take a right over to North 18th Street, which runs right in front of Nederland High School uh, as they they make their way through the streets of Nederland. And that route will then later make its way in front of Bulldog Stadium on 21st Street, then onto Nederland Avenue. They'll take a left there and a right onto Twin City Highway. And once they are in Port Arthur, that procession will then take a right again on Gulfway Drive and a right on Woodworth, then a right onto Proctor Street where it will, where it will end at Gabriel Funeral Home. Really causes you to just take pause as you watch this grief-stricken family I mean, anyone who's ever had children to see that mother. Oh, absolutely. Beer. You saw uh, in the light blue shirt, uh, Port Arthur Police Chief Mark Blanton right. uh, helping um, Mrs. Key into the family car there, as well as other uh, local law enforcement officers, first responders. Uh, you know, I mean, what can you say? This young man served our country uh, in just a great way. And uh, to, to pass away at the age of 22, uh, and like you said, for the family to have to deal with that at such a young age is just uh, hard to fathom. Yeah, it makes you really appreciate everyone who served our country, both men and women, and who are currently serving our country and the, the sacrifice for not just them, but for their entire family. And of course, many of them do return home, and in this case, he did not. And what a hard thing to watch 
as one of our own has fallen. As you mentioned, um, Sergeant Maddox, the 17th Southeast Texas soldier just since 2003 uh, to pass away while serving our country. Again, we'll have team coverage um, throughout the morning here over the next uh, few minutes. Uh, Ellie Cano is standing by live at the Jack Brooks Regional Airport. We'll check in with her in just a couple of moments as well as reporter Vanessa Holmes, who is uh, also uh, throughout the streets of Nederland where this procession will move. I believe we're ready for Ellie now, is that right? Greg, Tracy, standing out here right now, we still have the hearse and we still have the car that's going to follow the hearse that does have Maddox's family inside. And, and while we're out here, definitely an emotional, emotional time. I'm sorry if you can hear me, there is a helicopter that is about to leave, but the procession is going to leave momentarily. It was an emotional time. I believe it was Maddox's mother who completely broke down. She was overcome with emotion. She had to be put inside the car to see her son, her 22-year-old son, in a casket go into that hearse ser after serving our country. And we still have various multiple uh, military personnel out here. They're ready to go on to their procession. And, um, and I believe they're making some moves now about to go. Um, they're just this is a this is a short ceremony they're having here and then um, they're making some calls and they're about to go on the procession and we will keep you updated on the latest as this continues definitely an emotional time out here at the Jack Brooks Regional Airport. Greg, crazy. Absolutely and uh, anyone watching is uh, certainly feeling it. I unfortunately never got to meet the young man but you, you didn't have to. I mean this is a young man who was serving our country uh, representing us in Afghanistan and it's just uh, devastating for family friends uh, yeah, and you can see know. it all over Instagram all over Twitter uh, people commenting uh, one girl had put a picture she said I was going through my photos and look what I found and, yeah. and can't believe he's gone now but what a great guy if you were unable to uh, to line the procession route at all we do uh, ask you uh, to go to our 12 news Facebook page here's a way that you can help honor his uh, sergeant Maddox's memory if you cannot uh, get out on the procession route as you can see our uh, we've got a, uh, a uh, picture uh, of Sergeant Maddox that you can uh, share. If you will share that on your Facebook page, that's a great way to show your, uh, your support for the family, your, um, a way to thank Sergeant Maddox for his service. Uh, so we invite you to do that off of our 12 News Facebook page. And you can also, again, share any of your comments that the family, uh, that you would like the family to know, and they can read those. And um, that's one way that you can, you can do something. In, and let them know of your thankfulness for his service and for all those who do serve our country. This procession will uh, will leave Jack Brooks Regional Airport in just a couple of minutes, proceed uh, through the streets of Nederland and into Port Arthur as uh, Sergeant Maddox's body is uh, ends up at Gabriel Funeral Home in Port Arthur. Uh, as you can see, they're getting ready to uh, pull out the hearse and the family car as well. Um, we will check in with uh, reporter Vanessa Holmes, who is along the parade route on Highway 69. Um, and as you saw, uh, as you've seen for the past couple of days, uh, especially if you've driven through Mid County, through the Nederland and Port Arthur area, flags lining the streets, businesses changing their marquee signs, uh, thanking Sergeant Maddox for his service and uh, for paying the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. Uh, and as they pull out of the airport now, uh, they will begin this route, which will go uh, in front of Nederland High School, in front of Bulldog Stadium in Nederland, where uh, Anthony Maddox was a player just a few years ago, and uh, then into Port Arthur in just a little while. And we will continue to follow them as well as they make their way to Gabriel Funeral Home uh, in just a moment. And as, as you mentioned, Vanessa Holmes is out there as well, uh, ready with some live coverage. She's on that procession route where many people are lining the streets with those American flags and just to wave and to uh, show their appreciation for him as this family, grief-stricken as they are, makes their way. Just a few moments ago, we saw Anthony Maddox's mother, who was in that family car there, Glenda Key, uh, understandably overwhelmed with emotion. This is, you know, the first chance that they've had to actually see a casket, a flag-draped casket, actually touch it and uh, get close to their son once again and just uh, understandably overcome with emotion. She was helped into the family car there uh, as they are now driving along the streets of, uh, of Nederland, uh, heading out of Jack, Jack Brooks Regional Airport. If you're heading out onto the procession route, we invite you um, to share 
pictures, pictures thoughts, mm -hmm. anything you want. Hashtag Anthony Maddox. That's as easy as we could make it for you. So uh, we invite you to do that. We will share those on our Instagram page, on our Twitter feed uh, as well. So we will do that throughout the day. Once again, Sergeant Maddox, first tour in Afghanistan. Hadn't been out long and it was supposed to come home August 15th when he was severely burned in a non-combat related accident. So again, um, many lives that he touched, many people sharing their comments and um, why don't we read some of those right now while we're waiting. Some Facebook comments that uh, we've had throughout the morning. Uh, we will, uh, let's see if I can find some of the, uh, some of the better ones here. Uh, we've read a few of these so far, but um, let me make this a little bigger so we can see this monitor. Uh, Deborah says, may God bless his family with his grace and thank you young man, Lord have mercy on his soul. Mm -hmm. God bless his soldier, his family, and the Patriot Guard. Uh, Jessica says, a true hero, prayer for his family and for all the soldiers still at war. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace, uh, Sergeant Anthony Maddox. Bless his brave heart. Um, and I think that says, the ultimate sacrifice. He deserves nothing less than a true hero's welcome and a smooth transition home. Prayers for his family's peace. Right. We will continue our team coverage. 12 News HD reporter Vanessa Holmes is out on that procession route. She is on Highway 69 this morning as the cars are beginning to make their way towards her area. Yeah, that feeder road there where the community is lining up all along, along the route. Vanessa, what are you seeing there? Tracy, Greg, I'm on the feeder road of Highway 69 right now, and once the procession leaves the airport, it will travel down this road onto Spurlock Road, where it will pass in front of Nederland High School, Bulldog Stadium, and then make its way on Twin City Highway into Port Arthur. Well, it will end at Gabriel Funeral Home in Port Arthur, and as you can see behind me, there's already people lining the route waiting for this procession. This is veterans of the Southeast Texas Veterans Service Group who come out every time we have a fallen soldier in the area. They come out and pay their dues, pay their uh, respect, and they are out here this morning waiting on this procession to begin. Joining me now is Sergeant uh, First Class Johnny Kalunga. Um, you're a veteran. How important is it for um, you all to come out here today? Uh, it's very important because we want to come out here and support the family and support all veterans that, uh, that serve. And so we come out here and we do, we do this like this and we do, uh, like I said before, at Southeast Texas Veterans Service Group, we do military honors, which is funerals. and. Uh, all that they have to do is, uh, is if, a, if a veteran passes away, they, uh, they get hold of the funeral director. The funeral director contacts me, and then uh, we, I contact all our members, and we show up to do the funerals. And this isn't your first one. You also came out for um, private first class David Drake of Lumberton back in 2001. He's a 2008 graduate of Lumberton High School, and he was also killed in Afghanistan. You were here for that one. What was that like? I was emotional because I was at the airport and uh, I watched when the plane came in and they unloaded uh, the casket and then uh, I watched the uh, active duty military walk up to the casket and uh, they inspect the dog tag that's on there. Uh, they, uh, the family comes up there and they have their moment with them and then the uh, active uh, load the body back into the hearse and then uh, they came on the highway and went for it to, uh, to Lumberton. So it's, it's pretty emotional when you see something like that, you know, uh, face to face. Thank you very much for your service and for being out here today. And I spoke to the family of Sergeant Maddox, and they say today's a bittersweet day. Bitter because they didn't expect their son to come home like this. Sweet because of all of the community support. They support, support their uh, troops. American flags blowing in the breeze. Business signs honoring an American hero. Yard flags at homes lining the procession route. All signs of gratitude. But it's behind these doors where a yellow ribbon hangs that a family is grieving. Uh, Anthony was one of them ones. If he wanted something, if I was to tell him no, he'd just come lean up on me, you know, please mom, please. And I give in. Sergeant Anthony Maddox was his mother's only son. He joined the Army after graduating Nederland High School. He was on his first tour in Afghanistan when he was severely burned in a non combat accident. Through his little short period of time being here, it's just amazing to me how many people he has touched. Sergeant Maddox's parents are seeing an outpour of support from the community, now realizing their son touched the lives of many. His body is coming home Friday morning. 
he'll have a special escort. We're here as a witness for the veteran who served and also who at times sacrificed. The Patriot Guard will lead the procession, a tradition for this dedicated group. I feel proud. Uh, it's all about respect and honor and being there for the family. Condolences from the community are helping grieving parents make it through this tough time. A time when a mother remembers her son and the last time she would ever hear his voice. I tell him before he hang up, Anthony, be safe. Mama, love you. Can't wait to see you when you get home. And we are here on Highway 69, and you can see these uh, groups are starting to get ready for the procession. They're playing taps. I'll let you listen in. That is the sounds of the Southeast Texas Veterans Service Group awaiting for the procession to begin. People are starting to line this route, waiting for the body of Sergeant Anthony Maddox to make his way through Nederland, through Port Arthur, and to find a final um, landing spot at Gabriel Funeral Home. His funeral will be held on Saturday. We'll be out here all morning waiting for this procession. Stay with 12 News HD for the very latest. We're live in Nederland. Vanessa Holmes, 12 News HD. <clears throat> Excuse me, Vanessa, thank you for that, uh, that procession, by the way. She is literally just uh, probably no more than three or four blocks away from the Jack Brooks Regional Airport, so that procession will be rolling by there in just a matter of moments. Um, always great to see other veterans come out and pay their respects to our veterans who are uh, paying the ultimate sacrifice for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. It's a family. It's, it a, it's an entire family, so it's like uh, losing one of their own every time it happens. I um, wanted to share one of his friends had written... Logan Heber had told us he was an amazing guy. He had a smile that lit up the room, a personality that was one of a kind. Everyone loved him. Everyone in his high school knew who he was. Absolutely. So. Yeah, a 2009 graduate of uh, Nederland High School joined uh, the Army right out of high school and has served for the past few years. This, though, was his first tour in Afghanistan and, uh, as Tracy mentioned earlier, killed in a non-combat uh, fire, but uh, still serving our country nonetheless. Um, so proud uh, of him as well and for everything he's done. Uh, we continue to take your Facebook comments. Uh, Kawani says, RIP Sergeant Maddox, thank you for supporting Southeast Texas. We are now supporting you. May uh, God bless you and your family. And Peggy tells us, thank you Channel 12 for having this live. My son is currently serving in Afghanistan. My heart breaks for this family. My prayers are with you all. Bobby uh, also added, today I honor Sergeant Anthony Maddox and all those who sacrifice their lives for us. I cannot be there when they bring him home this morning, but my thoughts and prayers go out to this hero and his grieving family. Uh, may God bless you all. So uh, again, a very emotional time uh, for the Maddox family. Uh, we also invite you to uh, go to our Facebook page and we have a couple of pictures of Sergeant Maddox that you can share uh, the big banner at the very top. Uh, if you're not able to uh, go out and pay your respects in person, this is a great way to do it on your own uh, Facebook page. We've got um, the, uh, uh, the banner at the very top of uh, Sergeant Maddox and if you go to our photos, there are several in here as well uh, from this morning. Uh, nice uh, photos of Sergeant Maddox. The right year, there, that's uh, the one that we want them to share. It says, this I'm honoring, here. right, uh, if you'll go down, I'm honoring Sergeant Anthony Maddox, fallen Southeast Texas hero. If you'll share that um, I'll, along your Facebook pages, that would be wonderful for the family. We understand the procession is now making its way along the feeder road of Highway 69, uh, where we now take you live. Vanessa Holmes is standing by. Here comes the uh, Patriot Guard riders leading the way. Uh, of uh, Sergeant Anthony Maddox as uh, this makes its way through Nederland, Texas, which is where uh, Sergeant Maddox graduated from high school just a few short years ago.
once again this procession route making its way along the feeder road of Highway 69 northbound. Uh, they're about to take a right-hand turn onto Spurlock Road. We're uh, set up right there uh, by the intersection. They'll take a right on Spurlock Road and make their way down to North 18th Street. Well, they'll, they'll take another right-hand turn and drive right in front of Nederland High School. And uh, then they will go on their way to Bulldog Stadium on 21st Street where he played football. And I'm sure many people will be lining up there as well. Then a left on Nederland Avenue, a right onto Twin City Highway. And once they're in Port Arthur, that's where the procession will then take a right onto Gulfway Drive, a left onto Woodworth, and a right onto Proctor Street, where it will then end at Gabriel Funeral Home. There's still time if you're close to that area, if you would like to go out and show your support. The actual funeral is scheduled for uh, Saturday morning at 10 a.m. at uh, Antioch Missionary Baptist Church in Beaumont. That's on uh, Cardinal Drive in Beaumont. Uh, so uh, I would imagine there's going to be people lining the streets there as well along that route. Um, and just a, a whole slew of, uh, of Patriot Guard riders, uh, former veterans themselves, many of them. And, and just like we said, I mean, the emotional, uh, having to welcome a, a soldier home in this way is, is you never want to do it. It yeah, is devastating. You never want to do it. But uh, to see the support that the community uh, has brought out for the, the Maddox family, his, his mother and stepfather, as well as other relatives and friends and family, uh, we've heard from his friends who went to high school with him that everybody knew him, everybody liked him. Um, he was just one of those guys, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, to see the community come out and show their support uh, is just an amazing thing. Final two Patriot Guard riders leading the way now for the hearse as well as the family car behind it as uh, this procession continues on the road. Now let's listen to this time. in which you served, even if you came home, fine. The sacrifice that our military men and women put in, just beyond compare. You know, just having to leave their families, sometimes leaving newborns, a, a new wife, a new husband, and going off for months at a time to serve our country. And it, it, so often we don't thank them enough. And as you said uh, earlier, such a tight-knit group. Uh, these men and women who serve our country. Uh, you noticed all the police vehicles, all the first responder vehicles, just like they are such a tight-knit group. They're uh, involved in this procession as well. Um, we first learned about the death of Anthony Maddox just about two weeks ago. And 12 News HD reporter Adam Wright spoke with some high school friends of Maddox who's being remembered all across Southeast Texas today. Even if you were doing something else or talking to someone else, you stopped just to say hey to Anthony Maddox. At the stadium where he used to play football for Nederland High School, friends of Army Specialist Anthony Maddox gathered Tuesday to remember their former classmate. If you were short a dollar, he'll give you his last dollar. I mean, it was just that type of person. Maddox died Monday in a German hospital after receiving severe burns in a Saturday accident in Afghanistan. He was just 22 years old and on his first deployment. It just uh, really took a toll on the family in general. Uh, just, we just had to all come together and stay strong. 
Maddox graduated from Nederland High in 2009 after moving to Port Arthur from Illinois a couple years earlier to live with his mom. Logan Hebert was one of the first students to welcome him to the area. He was an amazing guy, man. He had a smile that lit up the room and personal, personality one of a kind. I mean, everyone loved him. Everyone at Nederland High School knew who he was. Wearing number 26, Maddox played linebacker and later defensive end for the Bulldogs. Yeah. Zach Atterbury yeah, was his teammate and quickly became his best friend. Uh, after school one day after football practice and I just saw him uh, kind of standing around outside the school so I offered, I asked him if he needed a ride home and he said yeah. Every, every day after school from then on I brought him home and I just, I don't know, he cared more about you than himself. It just seems unreal that he's already gone. In Nederland, Adam Wright, 12 News HD. Just amazing how many lives he took in just a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. he wasn't High born and raised here, but he right. sure quickly became part of our family here. And our live team coverage of this homecoming procession for Sergeant Anthony Maddox will now continue on our MyTech station. There are all the station channels you need for MyTech. 12.5 over the air on Time Warner Cable in HD. It's channel 870, mm -hmm. standard definition channel 15 on Direct TV channel 43 and on CMA Sour Lake channel 75. We are going to leave this ABC station, head over to My Takes Now. Right now we will send you back to live with Kelly and Michael. And we are now over on my text. We appreciate you following us over as we continue uh, this morning's uh, tribute to Sergeant Anthony Maddox, uh, Nederland High School graduate uh, who passed away serving our country in Afghanistan. Yes, and we appreciate you joining us all week long. Many of you have been posting tributes to Sergeant Anthony Maddox on our 12 News Facebook page. Katrina Woodard writes, um, thank you for your service. May you rest in peace. And Valerie Phillips writing, praying for the families, thanks for your service and your sacrifice. Home of the free because of the brave. Margaret Owens Marsh said, welcome home, soldier. Thank you for keeping my family safe. And Judy Bradford posted, he and his family are deserving of every bit of support that we can give them. Preston Armstrong writing, thank you for your service. God bless you and your family along with the rest of the military. Kristen Coleman Stark adding, my heart and prayers are with the Maddox family. So grateful for his service and sacrifice for our country. And Adrian Shelton posting, thank you, sir, for helping protect this nation, praying for your family. And Denise Mahan posting, thanking this young man for his service to our country, prayers for his family and friends. And James Felder saying, welcome home, Sergeant. Your mission is complete. Rest in peace. As we've uh, said uh, earlier this morning, Sergeant Anthony Maddox, the 17th Southeast Texas soldier to pass away while serving our country since 2003. Army Sergeant First Class Gary Collins of Beaumont became the first local serviceman to die in the war on terror. He was killed November 8, 2003 when his vehicle hit an improvised explosive device in Iraq. 19-year-old Marine Lance Corporal Shane Goldman of Little Cypress was killed by gunfire during a street riot in Iraq on April 5th of 2004. That was his second tour of duty. Army Chief Warrant Wesley Charles Fortenberry of Woodville was in an Apache helicopter that was shot down in Baghdad in 2004. The 38-year-old died on April 11th of that year. 30-year-old Benjamin Dwayne Williams of Orange was one of three Marines killed while conducting combat operations against enemy forces in Al Anbar Province, Iraq. <clears throat> the Staff Sergeant was on his third tour when he died. 27-year-old <clears throat> Army Staff Sergeant Edward Reynolds Jr. of Groves, or Jay as he was called by family and friends, was killed when his vehicle hit a roadside bomb in Iraq. The 1997 graduate of Thomas Jefferson High School in Port Arthur had served for two years when he died on September 25th of 2006. Army Staff Sergeant Daniel Weingart of Honey Island was 23 years old when his tactical vehicle drove off an overpass in Iraq, killing him on October 17th, 2006. Another 
teenager who died in Iraq, <clears throat> Army Specialist Ryan Berg of Sabine Pass. The 19-year-old was killed January 7, 2007, when his unit came under attack by enemy forces. A bullet from a sniper's Russian-made AK-47 hit him in the, so in the shoulder. Port Arthur native Brandon Keith Bob was one of two soldiers killed July 17, 2007, when an IED detonated under their Humvee in Baghdad. The Army Private First Class was only 20 years old. Bob attended Port Arthur Memorial High School for three years <clears throat> before Hurricane Rita forced his family to relocate to Florida. 20-year-old Army Specialist Kamisha Jane Block of Vider died August 16, 2007 in Iraq. The military police officer was shot and killed by another soldier and was the first woman from Southeast Texas to be killed in the current conflicts in the Middle East. Marine Lance Corporal Jeremy Wayne Burris of Liberty riding in a military patrol vehicle in the Al Anbar province of Iraq on October 8, 2007 when his unit hit an improvised explosive device hidden in the road. The 22-year-old survived the initial blast and rescued two wounded Marines from the vehicle. But when Burris returned to the vehicle to retrieve some equipment, a second IED detonated, killing him instantly. Lance Corporal Burris left behind six younger siblings. And Army Sergeant Sean Tusha from the Liberty County town of Hull was serving his third combat tour in Iraq when a roadside bomb blew up his vehicle on April 9, 2008. The 30-year-old was survived by his wife and two children. Army Chief Warrant Officer Rodney Allen Jarvis of Newton was serving in Iraq when he died of a heart attack at the age of 34 on July 13, 2009. The 14-year veteran was known by his Army peers as being hilarious and had previously served in Haiti and Germany. He left behind a wife and two school-aged daughters. His father, Robert Jarvis, also an Army veteran, died of a heart attack at the age of 55. Marine Corporal Dustin Ray Cheney returned home to Lumberton in 2006 after being wounded by an IED that hit his Humvee in Iraq. His family says from then on he suffered from heart problems and post-traumatic stress disorder until he died of congestive heart failure on May 22nd of 2010. Cheney was only 27 years old and left behind two children. Leston Winters, who was known as Tony by loved ones, was raised in Sour Lake. He enlisted in the U.S. Army in July of 1998 and was 30 years old when he was killed by a roadside bomb in Kandahar, Afghanistan on July 15, 2010. Winters served as a civil affairs medical sergeant and was promoted to staff sergeant posthumously. Winters was on his third tour of duty, the first two being in Iraq, and had just re-enlisted for another six years of service. Tony left behind a wife and three children. Army Sergeant Rafael Bagai Baez of Port Arthur was killed on September 23, 2011, his 28th birthday, when his unit was hit with an IED in Wardak, Afghanistan. While he was home the previous March, he had proposed to his girlfriend of one year. Baez joined the Army in October 2013 and was just days away from returning home to Port Arthur for good and retiring from the military. Besides his fiancée, he also left behind an eight-year-old daughter and a four-year-old son. Five days after Baez's death, Army Private First Class David Drake was one of five soldiers killed when an improvised explosive device went off near their Humvee in Ghazni province of Afghanistan on September 28, 2011. Nine days later would have been the Lumberton soldier's 22nd birthday. By the way, there will be a special service at 1030 this morning for PFC Drake at Freedom Park that's behind Lumberton City Hall. There will be a plaque dedicated in his memory. Family and friends will be in attendance and Lumberton residents as well as the rest of the public is encouraged to attend. And that brings us to Army Sergeant Anthony Maddox. The 17th Southeast Texas soldier killed while serving our country passed away just a few days ago. All right, and as we were mentioning, many people lining that parade route, we saw his casket uh, return to Southeast Texas at just about, what was it, 15, 20 minutes ago mm -hmm. as they had the procession there and uh, begin and, and so many people lining the route to just give their thanks for him and for the many people who serve our country every single day, doing what many people won't do to keep us free. Once again, that parade route making its way through Nederland. It will end up in Port Arthur uh, later on this morning. Uh, 
just a look at some of the photos that we've uh, accumulated over the past couple of weeks of, of Sergeant Anthony Maddox, friends, family uh, here at home also uh, while he was serving in Afghanistan. And um, like I said, just a, a, a sad day, but uh, a day to celebrate and thank um, Sergeant Maddox for everything he did for our country, for serving our country, and for paying the ultimate sacrifice. Of course, we saw the family there just grieving and uh, Sherry writing on Facebook to her specifically saying, so sorry for your loss, Maddox's mother. God, please help her heart or heal her heart and to know God has a better plan for him. We don't know, but he is in heaven now. I uh, want to remind you of this procession route. They're not moving very quickly, so it's going to take uh, quite a bit of time for them to get to their final destination in Port Arthur. They just, a few minutes ago, made a right on Spurlock Road in Nederland. They're making their way now to North 18th Street, uh, where they will take a right-hand turn. That runs right in front of Nederland High School. In front of, uh, and then they will make their way onto Bulldog, or in front of Bulldog Stadium on 21st Street. Uh, we're being told that right now that they are passing Bulldog Stadium right now, so that gives you an idea of where that procession is if you'd like to head out there. They will then be turning onto Nederland Avenue and a right onto Twin City Highway. Once in Port Arthur, the procession will then take a right onto Gulfway Drive, a left onto Woodworth, and a right onto Proctor Street, where it will then end at Gabriel Funeral Home. And the funeral service for Sergeant Maddox will be Saturday, 10 a.m. at Antioch Missionary Baptist Church in Beaumont. And that wraps up our live coverage now of the homecoming procession for our fallen Southeast Texas soldier, Sergeant Anthony Maddox. We're going to close out our special report asking you to please keep the Maddox family and friends in your thoughts and prayers as well as all of those who've served our country in the past and who are still serving today. And a big thank you from all of us so very much for your service to our country.